Um, CMAR is a lot more than just a health organization. Uh, we do a lot more than, than that. that. That is our primary mission. But we're also a, an organization that tries to create social change. And in order for us to create social change, you know, we need to tell the right stories. Until CMAR uh, took on this project, we were the only ones that were not visible in terms of history, in terms of contributions to the state. And in this museum, the CMAR Museum, we're hoping to begin to teach about our past to young children. And we tell that story here in our museum. And I think it's a story that very few people know or, or understand. But that's our legacy, that's our history. And now we are at this point where we are beginning to make our history known and share that history with the greater public. So that people can learn, not only Latino children, but uh, everyone uh, in, in the state. We've made some major contributions to the state of Washington that a lot of people don't know about. Latinos began to arrive to Washington, to other parts of the Pacific Northwest, in the um, late 1930s, and but more so during the war, the, the arrival of, of migrants and, and some immigrants began to come. Latino people came to the state to work in the farms. The most obvious invisible experience is the uh, farm worker experience here in the museum because that, that's our origins here in the state of Washington. We were migrant workers. My parents were migrant workers, I was a migrant child. Uh, and so my, my parents' uh, story is in this museum. And so, and that, that is how the original people that arrived here in the early part of the 20th century, that's the reason why they came, is to work in agriculture. When we arrived, you see those cabins, so you see the pickup truck, you see some of the uh, equipment, some of the tools, you know, that we used to use when we arrived here. And, and that's where we pay a lot of uh, homage to the pioneers, right, the families that originally came here uh, in the 1930s, 1940s and lived in those cabins. So, so what we're saying to people that come here is that uh, th those, those elders uh, that originally came, they sacrificed tremendously and so the next generation, their children, could have a better life. The next important uh, period of time was when the kids graduated from high school and the University of Washington reached out to them and, and people got educated, children got educated, and we developed a professional community as a result of that. Washington was changed because of the students from the University of Washington who were the children of the migrant workers, right, that came here in the 40s and the 50s. And so it's a beautiful story that we all should uh, know and understand because we're all somehow affected by that history. When we came to the University of Washington, we were in the middle of the civil rights movement, trying to make social justice change. So a lot of the students that came here, like myself, uh, we decided that uh, it was not going to be enough to just get an education. That we needed to be part of the, of the civil rights movement uh, so that we could create social change. At the same time the civil rights movement is going on, there's also the Vietnam War. So one of the consequences of, of this war, and, and it happens in every war, is the uh, tragic nature and the terror of war. Uh, and during Vietnam, uh, Latinos paid a heavy price. So the photographs that you see in the entrance to the museum are part of the anti-war protest that took place in Seattle and um, Latinos were very much involved here as they were in Los Angeles, in San Francisco and other parts of the country. We were getting an education. At the same time, we were participating in these two movements and learning to be leaders uh, and to try to make social justice change. And so that's uh, sort of the story that we're telling in this, part of the, uh, in this part of the museum. I think it's important for the community to know that it was that group of students in the late 60s, early 70s, that were not only educated, but they were politicized. They, 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 they became very strong activists in their communities. And, and that changed Washington. Right? In, fact, in fact, that's how CMAR was created. It was through University of Washington students who understood that there was a strong need uh, to provide health care. So that's why CMAR does the work that it does. We provide public housing. I'll let others talk about that. Uh, we have educational programs, and now we have this wonderful museum. 
because again, it's with the idea that we are addressing the, the whole community. We're, we're addressing the needs of this community in the broadest sense. We have many facets. We want people to know that, you know, absolutely we came here and worked in agriculture. And this is what this section over here is all about, showing the kind of labor that we did, the kind of conditions that we worked in. Uh, but we also want them to know that we, we were more than just workers, right? We were also people, humans, who had a life, who had children and we develop communities throughout the state of Washington. And so these pictures that you see behind me is a testament to that development of, of communities. Because it's not in the history book doesn't erase the fact that people were here. Uh, and that's the wonderful thing that this museum is doing is that it's finally beginning to acknowledge the presence of Latinos in Washington state in the greater Northwest. And so we wanted to tell the story for the young people that are coming behind us. Um, we want them to know their roots. And so what we, we want to tell them is that it's possible uh, for them to uh, come from low-income families or come from farm worker families, uh, that it's possible for them uh, to, uh, to achieve a lot more if they stay in school and if they get an education. And so that is why it's important, you know, for them to come, learn who they are, be proud of who they are, Realize, you know, that the, the Latino community may have made significant contributions to the state economy, uh, and and nobody's telling that story. So we want to tell it. You know, when we first opened it to the community at large, I was ecstatic. I mean, it was uh, it was a great feeling. Um, I was proud of it. Uh, we have a lot of individuals that work really hard to put it together. Dr. Gamboa. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Garcia, uh, Teofila, uh, Carolina Lucero, um, Norma Zavala, uh, en Enrique Morales, Gabriel Gallardo, you know, some of the committee, or oh, Jose Bazan, our architect, played a major role as well. So we had a lot of individuals that spent a lot of time working on this effort and uh, and it came out really, really nice. I mean, we, we had a vision, um, and it came out as good as our vision, uh, and we're very proud of it. What you see now, in a, in a year or two, we will change out, change out a lot of the objects and put new things in the museum for people to see that's reflective of our experience. And so, and so every day uh, we get uh, new donations or we find items out in the community that we want to have eventually displayed in our museum. So it's, uh, it's a never ending process. And that's why I like it because you, know, you don't just create a museum and the work stops. No, it continues every single day. Uh, and so we're very happy about that. The, the museum, as you see it today, um, as we hope for all museums, is that they do not become stale that constantly they are evolving, and the evolution is to bring more information, make it available, but also integrate uh, knowledge about the Latino community to the larger uh, um, public, which is uh, composed of Latinos as well as other communities. Uh, I'm hoping that this museum um, is going to help our children and other individuals learn about our history and learn that we are a proud community, uh, we have an important uh, role to play uh, and will continue to play uh, going into the future.